All right, I've gone ahead and started the wiring. I've got some Wago connectors here, divided up by earth, neutral, and line. And I went ahead and just took the inlet, cut it, and then stripped the wire, and then inserted it in here. And then I put the other end of the wire here, and then connected it. Um, what I'm gonna do then is, so this is connected to the 24 volt power supply, and I'm gonna connect 16 gauge wire and run it through my conduit here to the 48 volt next. Um, I did have to trim down this conduit. It's real easy to trim. I just used, I just marked it so it fit between these two and I used a pair of scissors just to cut the ends. So pretty easy to do, but you, you're gonna wanna um, position this pretty close to the bottoms of the power supplies because you do need to have room for your, um, your, your Super 8 board and, and other Raspberry Pi and other components. So that's kind of how I'm going to lay it out. The Raspberry Pi will go over here, the Super 8 board and steppers here. Um, I've got the SSR mounted here. So it's a good idea to kind of lay out everything how you want it. And to mount this stuff, I'm just going to put some strips, maybe three strips of VHB tape on the bottom, and then I'll go ahead and drop it here. The nice thing about this channel is um, normally you might slide your lid on top of it, but you can actually just wedge it on from the side too. So. There's a, there's a couple of different ways to get that cover on. I'm also definitely going to be using these bottom holes here, especially for um, like things like end stops and things that go on the Z, so they're gonna come through. I'll go ahead and show how I prepare the VHB tape. Um, I'm typically gonna use a little bit bigger piece for this stuff, and I'll just come in here with my hobby knife, X-Acto knife, make sure that I've got a good piece cut, and then I'll just put one on the end here, and then I'll put one in the middle and one on the other end. And there we have it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show how I peel this stuff because it can be annoying. I just take my, my hobby knife and I try to lift this corner up a little bit and then just peel and then repeat that for all the pieces and then we're gonna go stick it down. Okay, I've got this cut now. I'm gonna move it all the way down pretty much to the bottom of the power supply rails. And then I'm gonna to try to get it as straight as I can and even. And once you stick that down, it doesn't want to, it's not gonna to wanna to move. And now that I've got that down, I can easily run my AC wire through here and connect it to here. And I can also use it for any other connections um, that I'm gonna to wanna to put on these boards here as well. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and crimp my connector. Make sure that you use the proper terminals. I've got these uh, terminals here. They're spade terminals and they're rated for 14 to 16 gauge wiring and this is 16 gauge wiring. So I'm going to go ahead and I already got my my end cut here. I'm going to double check and see if how that looks. It might be a little bit long. That's, that's probably fine. It's okay if it protrudes a little. And then I've got these crimpers here and I'll put the link in the description. Um, there's a red, blue, and a yellow. This is a blue terminal, so I'm going to put it, I'm going to mount it carefully in here. And then I'm just going to basically hold my wire in there in place, position it so the wire, make sure that the wire hasn't escaped. And then I'm going to squeeze it down. Okay, and after crimping, this is what you get. This looks pretty good. Things that you want to check. Uh, make sure you've got two kind of double grooves here, at least with my crimper. So that's that's how you know you got a good secure connection. Make sure that you do the tug test and nothing comes loose. Uh, make sure that your jacket is still under the crimp. You don't want any wires out here. So that looks like a good crimp. And we're going to go ahead and move on to the red one. Just repeat the crimping for all three of these wires as I showed. And then I went ahead and just connected these directly to the uh, AC side of the power supply. You should see an N, L, and an E, or a symbol for earth, on your AC inlet. And those are just going to map directly into your power supply side. As you can see here, I've been using Wagos. And these are a special kind of connector that allow you to basically split off any of your wiring connections. So rather than go directly to the power supply, I went ahead and went to the Wago, and then I went to the power supply from these. And that's both for the 24 volt and 48 volt power supply. 
And don't forget about your earth wire. I went ahead and used a black wire with some heat shrink and just crimped and connected to here just like I did the other two. So now we've got the AC side pretty much completed. I'm gonna prepare the Super 8 mount and make sure, I, I would recommend you dry fit this um, before you screw everything in on the DIN mounts, but we are, um, the fans are gonna be on the right hand side like this. And for the DIN mounts, I'm gonna go ahead and mount them in this orientation. Okay, so in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and take my M3 by eights and I'm just gonna push that through. And then I'm also gonna use an M3 nut and then just lock it into place. I've got that one in, now I'll go ahead and repeat. And then I'll also put the second uh, den mount here. And that's how it should be laid out once you're done. And I went ahead and mounted the Super 8 board to the this here, and it went just fine. I used M36s that I had here. Um, I'm starting to kind of run out of screws that are smaller for this kit, so I'm, I'm going ahead and using what I've got laying around just so I've got extras here if I need them. Um, this, this works pretty well. I'd like to go ahead and prepare the Super 8 board now. And everything that you need is going to be in this uh, VZ330 Box 1. And I've got this sticker. I'm going to go ahead and put that on first. Where it's position 1 through 10 is how you want it oriented for this. So bed out is going to be on position 1. And this is just a sticker on the back. So um, go ahead and peel that and stick it on. Okay, so bed power is going to go all the way here. And try to get it relatively lined up. And next up, I'm going to install the fuses. And those are going to all go in this row, so you want, it doesn't matter which way they go in, they just need to fit. Um, you do need to have the blue ones first. Just make sure it's nice and lined up before you push, so you don't break anything. So you want to go blue, blue. Okay, those are all in. Now we're going to do the MOSFETs. Those are going to go in between these fan headers. And in my kit, the MOSFETs were just kind of stuck together like this. Just go ahead and break all those apart. And then you're just going to take the MOSFET, it doesn't matter which direction, and then just load them up in, inside the board here, right in between these fan headers. And um, yeah, I was off a pin. Make sure you get them in the, in the right uh, holes. And they should look like should look like that. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that on the camera. So make sure they're all in the holes and the correct, all three sets of pins are in the holes. Okay, we've got all of them in and we do have a spare, which is nice. So in case we happen to blow one, we can easily replace it. And that's why these are separate. Because sometimes you reverse the polarity or screw things up on a fan that gives you an opportunity to just replace the MOSFET. Next up, I'm going to configure the steppers and you're gonna need this bag of jumpers. For these two, these are gonna be the extruder and Z motor. We're just gonna run those in UART mode and they only need one jumper on them. And I'll just go ahead and place the jumper on that second row of pins or second column, I guess. We'll see it here in a second. And I'll show a close-up after I get the other one in. Okay. So there we put the pins on. And based on the manual, I also think that I need to jumper this first one in UART mode. Now the, the rest of these here, we're going to go ahead and jumper in SPY mode. And that's going to be the first, basically all the jumpers on this bottom row of two pins. And we'll do that for... The, these next four and this is pretty straightforward just like the UART ones you're just going to cover up these first rows or all the pins in the, these bottom rows so I'll go ahead and do that and show how this one's done all right and here's what it looks like after you get them all populated show another angle there make sure all the jumpers are all the way down so we've just to check everything we've got our UART jumper here 
here and here. And we've got four spy jumpers here. And just for completeness sake, we're gonna go ahead and jumper this as you are, even though we're not gonna, I don't know that we're gonna be using it, but this is how it was in the manual. Boxes four and five have your 5160s, and we're gonna go ahead and start with those. So you're gonna repeat the process that I'm gonna show here. So go ahead and open it up. Just get that out of the way for now. And remove this from the bag. After you do that, you're going to take your heat sink out, which is this pink piece here. And then go ahead and remove the backing carefully. Uh, if you don't have fingernails, you can always use a hobby knife, but I think I can get these. Yeah. That's pretty good. Okay, now the goal is we want to put these over these chips here. Try not to touch the capacitors while you're doing that. So I'm just going to go ahead and carefully insert this as best as I can. But that's how it should look. And then just repeat that for the other three. And after you get all the heat sinks in, then you're going to plug in this cable like such. Should just go in, make sure it's uh, all the way in. And also be sure to confirm that these jumpers are here. There should be two of them on the last two pins. And that's pretty much all you need for this piece. And to connect these to the board, you're going to need this little piece here. And make sure that the, it's, it goes in this way, so the GND goes towards the bottom of the board. And we're going to go ahead and plop that in right here. And just make sure everything's lined up before you put it in. And then when you connect it, your black pin should be on this bottom, and that's your ground. It should go right in. Just make sure it's nice and flush. And after that, um, you're, you're going to just go ahead and mount Oops, It has a little piece on it. Interesting. Um, but you're going to go ahead and mount it to the board here. And then if you have the fan mod that goes over this, you're going to want to put that in there too. If your board happens to have this little piece on it, you can just bend it off. Here we go. It just snaps right off like that. I'm not going to do these outside ones because I'm going to mount the fans over it and they need those. So I'll go ahead and just do the inside ones for this one. And that's in. And go ahead and just sink the inside too. And then repeat that for all the boards and leave these four corners open for the fan mount. At this point, I've got all four installed like this, you can see. And again, make sure you just leave the outside four screws open. And don't forget your Z and E stepper. And those are just going to go right in here. But before you do that, go ahead and put on your heat sink. So for the heat sink, just go ahead and set it on there on the gold plate. Try to get it centered as best as you can. And then there's only really one way you can get this in. And you want to use these last two connections here. And make sure you've got your jumper on UART. And we'll drop the last one in. Okay, and that concludes the steppers. We've got them all set up now. To mount this fan piece over the steppers here, I went ahead and put in some small M3 inserts. Or I went, I went ahead and put in some small uh, heat inserts here that are for M3s. And I went ahead and used M316s, and I found they were just the right length to secure the fan header to the mount. They seem to be a good choice, so you want to find some of those. And now we've just got to go ahead and put the fans on. The fan wires should probably face this way, so I just removed the fan header and rotated it. And I did find out after asking around, and, and uh, these are... JSTPH connectors, and the if you remember in your box there were some PH pin headers, um, not very many. So you you don't <laughs> good luck crimping these things because they are not fun. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then that way I can use these the the headers right on the board, and then um, I'm gonna just mount it right like that. I've already went ahead and crimped the first three, and I just wanted to show how I do it. 
so I use this tool called an Engineer PA09, and I've had this for a long time. It's a great tool for doing these kind of crimps, but you do have to be careful and definitely have to be patient. I don't need this long a cord or this long a wire, so I'm going to go ahead and just trim about that much off. Just make it the same length as the others. And you never know, that might come in, use, come in handy for something else, another project. Next thing I'm going to do is separate these a little bit, probably about that much. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim off some wire. And I'll, I'll use my wire strippers here. That's probably about right. You might want to get a little bit more. And I'll do the same thing for the black wire. It's always easier, I find, to get it a little longer and then trim it if you need to. In order to do this, I'm going to take my pen, my XP, or my pH pen, and I'm going to, to face it with the opening coming out this way. And I'm going to hold my tool where, the nut, where I can see the lettering. And then I'm going to use this 1.0 slot. And what I'm going to do is carefully insert it in. I'm going to push it all the way down into the slot. And then I'm going to push down until it's kind of stuck in there like that. And then I'm just going to take my wire. I'm going to kind of, you can twist it if you want. It makes it a little easier so it doesn't fray and go everywhere. And then I'm going to insert it all the way in until the jacket is, is um, flush. And then I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice squeeze. This is where there's a little bit of an art to it. So you want to squeeze it hard enough that it clamps to the wire, but not so hard that you break the pin. And these pins, these pH pins are a lot more fragile than the XH pins. And then you want to carefully remove it. And just rock it back and forth on both sides. And make sure, do the tug test, make sure nothing's moving. That one looks pretty good. Now you're going to go to your 1.4 slot. I'm going to pinch these, pinch that out, that outside there a little bit together so it'll fit. So I pinch those together so they fit. But I'll move down to my 1.4 slot and then I'll load it up and make sure you get it where it's angled correctly. And then just go ahead and do a light squeeze. That, one, that wasn't a great crimp, but it should be sufficient. And then when you insert these in, make sure that you have the polarity correct. So based on the diagram, when you insert them in, you want the, the red pin on the left, the black pin on the right. Um, as you as you plug it into the board, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna remove my connector out of here, and then I'll just look at the other connectors that I've already done and checked, and I'll make it the same way as those. So when you're looking at it from the side where you insert it, I'm just gonna go ahead and insert that in. There's a little pin on the top. You, it's really hard to see, but that's what keeps it locked into the connector. And if you get these backwards, you can just use a pair of tweezers to pull that tab up. And then you can pull the pin out. So that's how it should connect. Those are the little pin headers there. Let's go ahead and plop them in. And then you can just pick those up. And they should kind of stay out of the way. You might want to zip tie them to these wires. But I'll go ahead and secure this back. To my mount and then I'm pretty much done with the board at this point. Okay I've gone ahead and connected all the motors. These are a little tricky but you can bend the wires and kind of insert it and then I've run the track. I've run the wires through the aluminum 2020 extrusion but I've used these clips to hold the wires in and I've run them all the way up on the top down through the bottom through the grommet. For the rear motors here there is a, there's a grommet on the back side that you can run those through. Something else I would recommend doing is labeling your motor wires so you don't get them lost and mixed up. So you're going to need to cut your motor wires and insert them into pairs. There's the A pairs and the B pairs here. And then the first two are the voltage in, which is going to be 48 volt coming off of this guy. And then there's going to be a ground. So I'm going to run a Wago. I'm going to run 48 volt and a Wago, and then I'm going to just kind of hop over this and then run everything in here. All right, I've went ahead and run the wiring to my Wagos for the 48 volt, and now I'm going to be running that wire over to here and then inserting it in for all the VCC ground connections. And I'm gonna do that on all four of these. 
And I'm also going to crimp ferrules on the bottoms of those, so I'll, I'll show that here in a second. All right, next up I'm gonna show how to do ferrules. And with these, these are gonna be for the motor wires. So I'll go ahead and just strip off some wire. That looks about right. And then I'm going to insert it. I'm gonna take a ferrule that should be about the right size. You want to make sure that your wire can go pretty much all the way through, um, or, or at least you can fit it through. So I probably could have crimped that one a little longer. Then you're going to take your crimpers. I've got these ratcheting ones. Insert an end to the center, and then just give it a good squeeze. And then do the tug test. And if it doesn't tug out, which it's not, then it should be appropriately sized. And you may have to experiment a little. I've got a lot of different sizes, but these seem to work pretty well. And you want your, your crimp to look relatively uh, square. And if it's not, then you might need to adjust the, the tension on your crimper. And then I'm just going to repeat this for all of the motor power connectors. And this is the wire that was included in the mellow kit. And I've got both wires crimped. And then I'm going to just strip off the bottoms of these. Now for Wagos, you can you could use ferrules if you want, but you don't need to, so I, I never do. To insert your wire into Wago, you're just going to take your wire. I like to twist it on the end, and I kind of did that already. Then I just insert it in and close it. That's it. It should stay in there nice and tight. Now what I'm going to do that I've got those both inserted is I'll insert the voltage, the VCC, into this first screw terminal on the board and then I'll insert the blue one into the which is the negative or the ground into the second terminal and I'll repeat that process for all four of these and then once I get that done I've added this uh, cable channel here and then I will just tuck everything away in there okay this def definitely isn't the best angle but I wanted to go ahead and show you how I do it so I've already loosened this terminal here which is where the negative is going to go and then I'm just going to go ahead and take my wire with my ferrule on the end and then I'm going to go ahead and insert it right like that and then it's also a good idea while you're screwing it down just to hold it in place and then just give her a good tightening and they shouldn't move yeah those look good so now I've got those in and then I'll just repeat for these other two or other three here I've completed all the connections and I've kind of tidied up the wiring a little bit and tucked it into this channel and I'm going to be sliding this closer at some point, but I need the slack in here to work on it and also to tighten the fan shroud when I'm done. So that's why there's a little excess there, but that'll be okay. Before I complete the motor wiring, I want to show how I, how you can check pairs. Now the LDO wires, I believe are all going to be similar and you're going to need this little continuity setting on mine. It's a, it's a little speaker looking thing. It beeps when it has a, when, when the wires are connected. So you are going to have a little bit of resistance, so you can also check the resistance. But if I check the blue and the, say the blue and the green one, I'm pretty sure that's not a pair. It's not, so I don't get any kind of beeping. But if I check the blue and the red one that are right next to each other, I do get a beep and I do get a resistance. So that means that the blue and the red are a pair and the black and the green are a pair. And it shouldn't matter as much on what order those are in because we can always reverse things in the firmware. And on the bottom of your board, you're going to see that you need to have first two pairs together and then the next two pairs together. So it'll, it'll just go pretty much the same order we have here. And I'm going to use the order of motor wiring that, that the documentation recommends. So X, X1, Y, Y1. And this is why it's important to make sure you have your, your uh, motor wires labeled. I think in my case, I'm probably just going to cut the connector off put ferrules on the end and then ensure they're in the right order. And I'm going to make sure that I use the same order for all four. There's definitely options here. If you don't want to cut the cable, you could make a connector that, that mates to this and then wire it in that way. I went ahead and cut my motor for X because it's going to be here. And now I'm going to prepare the wires for ferrules. And then I'll just go ahead and put ferrules on the ends and then insert them in the proper order. tug test and they're on there good so that's all I need to do I've got all the ferrules on now and now I can go ahead and insert them yeah make sure you open these up real good because these are small ferrules okay that's what a completed one looks like 
And now I'm going to just repeat for the next three. And once you're done crimping and connecting, you should have something that looks a lot like this. And now I've got the fan header back on, and I put the den clips in and pushed it over. And that looks pretty good. Got the wire cover on. So it helps keep things tidy. Pretty happy with that. So I went ahead and removed the uh, connector that was in there. It's a JST XH 4 pin. Now, unfortunately, the LDO Z motor came with this kind of connector. So I'm just going to have to remove that and. Um, just crimp some JSTXH pins on here. Not a big deal. The kit does include JSTXH pins as well. Make sure that you grab these and not the PH pins, which are smaller, but look pretty much identical otherwise. And now I've got the stepper motor connected and crimped up, and I've also got the Z stepper back in. Next up, I'm going to work on the 24 volt side of the board, and that's pretty much going to be everything. I've got the 48 volt running into the steppers, I'm not going to be running 48 volt to here. So the 24 volt is here, the 48 volts here. I've got Wagos here for 48 volt and I've got Wagos here that I'm going to go ahead and run a 24 volt positive and negative from the power supply to the Wagos, just like I did for the 48 volt. And then I'll be extending these Wagos to the board here. I found that the spade terminals that were included with the Fly Super 8 kit were not the greatest. So I went ahead and used these red ones that I had laying around. Luckily they were the same size. So just go ahead and crimp these just like you have done previously by this point. Uh, make sure you get a good crimp on them. Okay, I've gone ahead and put those into the terminals here and screwed them down. They seem to be just fine. And then go ahead and repeat the process pretty much for all of these connections. This one you're gonna leave empty for now until we hook up our heated bed. These other ones, uh, they're all gonna be tapping uh, you can all run them in parallel, and I've seen some people just kind of jumper these together um, from maybe the one input, but I'm going to go ahead and just run them, at least these two, I'm going to run from the from the Wago. But if you want to connect those up and save wiring, you can just kind of hop over on these if you want. And the main concern in here is you want to make sure you have all your plus and minus correct. You don't want to reverse the polarity on any of this. At this point, I've got all the wiring done. I'm going to double check my polarity. So I've got plus, which is red, or blue for minus. That looks good. Minus, plus, looks good. Minus, plus, looks good. Minus, plus, looks good. Now I'm going to just do one more thing that I want to show you. And this is where we're going to tie the negative on the 24 with the negative on the 48. And this is needed for the 5160s. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this blue wire here, and I'm gonna twist in another wire, and then I'm gonna tap it into this one. I'm gonna remove my 48 volt wire as well. And basically all I'm gonna do is take this little wire here and use it as kind of a hopper. So I'm gonna make the distance about like that. I'm gonna measure it real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the jacket about yay long. And then what I'm gonna try and do here is just twist the 24 volt end together. Doesn't matter which one you pick. You can really do this anywhere. But I'll twist that together like so. And you can lengthen this if you need to. And I'll go ahead and insert that in, do the tug test. It's good. And then I'll do the same thing with the 48 volt side. All right, that's pretty good. Those are together. I'm gonna to make sure there's a pretty good connection there and then I'm just going to go ahead and insert those and there we go now we've got our negatives tied together here's a little bit of a close-up so you can see how everything came together